And we're back. To reiterate from last time, this is being written probably a week to a couple of days before I see Spider-Man Homecoming, so this whole imaginary fantasy booking of alternate universe movie franchises thing is in no way meant to be any kind of criticism of existing movies or assertion that I could have somehow done it better. This is just for fun, change of pace, it's, it's pretty much this or join the rest of the internet in pretending I know jack shit about the internal politics at Lucasfilm. Seriously though, good luck to Ron Howard, and if this all works out, I hope he makes them make another Willow. So, from last time, the imaginary angle we're working from here is that instead of casting Tom Holland as a whole new Spider-Man and starting over again, we've brought back Tobey Maguire to once again play his Peter Parker in the Civil War cameo. With that having been laid out, we now pick back up with the Solo series, which is now basically Spider-Man 4. But, you know, Marvel doesn't really do numbers now, so we're gonna call this one Spider-Man One More Day because Marvel likes to borrow comic titles without actually following the comic storylines, because it's a great title for restarting a legacy series, and because it'll get everyone talking. I want that wall crawling arachnid prosecuted! Okay, bullet points, since I'm not actually writing a fucking screenplay here. We open, Spidey is back in New York, things are going pretty great. He's backed by Tony Stark, he and Aunt May and Mary Jane and Ms. Lyon even have a sick apartment in the tower. He's got that iron spider armor, and he's basically now the public face of superheroes you can trust now that two-thirds of the Avengers are fugitives. In fact, when the authorities need to bust in on people doing now illegal superhero vigilante shit, Spider-Man is the guy who takes point, because it looks good for the cameras. Betcha that'll work out great. First big moment, we do the Spider-Man unmasks for the media thing from the Civil War comic, because he's done not getting credit for stuff. This seems like a good idea and gets the good coverage, but because this is Peter Parker we're talking about, it fucks things up for him personally almost immediately. Firstly, he gets dressed down right then and there by J.K. Simmons, returning as J. Jonah Jameson for, in the immediate, ruining the reputation of the Daily Bugle, because now all those news stories they ran are tainted because they now know they were basically Spider-Man's publicity shots. I mean, I mean, yeah, when you think about it, Peter has really screwed everyone that worked at that newspaper. But also, JJ is mad because he pretty much lied to his face for like 25 years. Now that would be a big scene, right? Jameson finally having the moral high ground, Simmons letting the bluster drop away, and, and just being a bitter, disappointed, emotionally hurt old man. Like, that would be powerful. Secondly, during the course of the plot stuff, Peter also runs into one of his former students from his high school, a teenage kid who's also kind of pissed at him because he grew up hearing stories about Spider-Man, but now Spider-Man is a guy who goes around hassling people for not towing the line with the government. Maybe like throw in the C-list supers from S.H.I.E.L.D. or one of the Netflix shows or like The Prowler or somebody getting grabbed for not really doing anything to drive this point home. Oh, and the kid, Miles Morales. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's going where a lot of you probably have already guessed it is. Uh, please try to act surprised with everyone else. Thirdly, Mary Jane starts having second thoughts before everyone else does. This is assuming you're able to get Kirsten Dunst back. If not, they could have always left this part out and give this bit to Aunt May. Oh, thirdly, bad guys. See, now that not only everyone knows Peter Parker is Spider-Man, but also that he's pretty sure he got that way from a mutated spider bite, there's some shady mad scientists being bankrolled by gangsters trying to recreate that phenomenon to shit, I don't know, make Spider-Man super soldiers or something? Does it really matter? In any case, the mad scientist in question, a Spider-Man nemesis mad scientist all-star team. Alistair Smythe, Professor Miles Warren, and Dylan Baker returning as Dr. Kurt Connors, who's fallen on hard times because he keeps doing freaky lizard stuff to himself to make his arm grow back, and it's starting to make him look and act all freaky. Not full lizard freaky, but still just weird at this point. In any case, they're going around stealing science equipment and stuff like that, but since they don't have a bunch of Spider-Man blood to work with, they've mostly just succeeded in growing a bunch of very big spiders. Because it's kind of weird that we've done like six Spider-Man movies and he's never fought a great big spider. Like, that seems kind of like a miss, right? Actually, it's kind of weird that Spider-Man's mythology until that whole Ezekiel thing happened was never really all that much about spiders to begin with. Like, it, it's not bad, it, it's just kind of funny, right? So Spider-Man recognizes that these science robberies might be linked together and might be a big deal, but Iron Man and the government and the mayor and whoever are making him stay focused on high-profile stuff and don't want him running around playing small-time detective for robberies. So instead, he tries to right two wrongs by anonymously leaking 
leaking the evidence and theories he's compiled to Jameson, so he can go make a big scoop out of it and maybe restore the Bugle's reputation. But JJ, having lost a ton of staff, opts to go and investigate things with just himself, find the bad guy's lair, they get captured, and Spider-Man has to go save them. After he puts his old suit back on and gets all up in Iron Man's grill, because if he let him handle this himself like he wanted to, his friends would not be in trouble. Of course, the bad guys want him to come so they can capture him and take his blood, and in the course of that, Peter's inevitable escape, the rescue, etc., we find out that the guy who's been paying for all of this is the Kingpin. <laughs> because D'Onofrio showing up will pop the crowds huge, and now that there is a Kingpin in the Marvel Universe, you have to do Spider-Man vs. Kingpin once. You, you just have to. I have waited for this for some time. What do you have in mind? A pie-eating contest? Ah. Approximately 2% of my body mass is fat. Allow me to show you what 350 pounds of muscle is capable of. Now in the course of all this rescuing and fighting and stuff, the big spiders get out and that's our big end of act two extended battle. Big spiders in New York. Not like Godzilla size, but like dog sized ones and car sized ones and maybe like a big transformer sized tarantula because that'll look awesome. So big action scene maybe goes on a touch too long because Marvel, they get the spiders contained, but wouldn't you just know it, during the fight Peter winds up fending off a handful of them in what turns out to be Miles Morales neighborhood. When he goes back after to take stock of the situation, there's one not as big spider left and it bites Miles right on the neck, putting him into a poison coma. They take Miles to the Stark Tower for advanced care, but he needs an anti-venom, and it stands to reason the bad guys must have made one. So Peter, even though at this point he is already beat to hell, has to run off and get it, because if he doesn't, Miles only has one more day. See what I did there? He arrives back at the now mostly vacated bad guy lair just in time to find Doc Connors using the last working equipment and the stolen blood to finally become the Lizard. So one more fight, not a big long one, but nasty, dirty, hand-to-hand -hand and personal like the Green Goblin fight from the end of the first movie. Clock is ticking, kid's gonna die. Peter basically gets torn to shreds here, but he gets over just long enough to acquire the anti-venom and he hurries his ass back swinging across the city. Maybe Iron Man comes in and helps him the last leg of the way for a redemption moment, I don't know you probably need to do that. They give the kid the medicine. Peter finally slumps down, cradled in Pieta pose with either MJ, Aunt May, or both. And at the moment Miles Morales comes back to life, Peter Parker dies a hero. Funeral. Sad. Everyone's there, as many still living people from the other movies as you can get. MJ is sad, Stark is sad, Captain America and the other Avengers are watching from the distance incognito. Sure, also sad. Jameson comforting Aunt May, they build a statue of him in Queens, run that monologue from the end of the first movie again. Just, just kick the audience in the balls over and over and over again. There's been like 12 to 15 Marvel movies at this point, right? We've earned a sad ending for one of them. Why do this? Well, it gives closure. Look, Tobey Maguire doesn't need to come back and do a three-movie action franchise thing. This puts closure onto the original Spider-Man series. It gives it the proper send-off that Spider-Man 3 definitely wasn't. It just, it shuts the book in a nice way and allows the series to continue. Because you can't send the audience home completely depressed. So, just before the credits run, fade in. Miles Morales wakes up groggy in now a regular hospital room. It's nighttime. His family is there, but they're fast asleep. He tries lifting his hand, but it's tangled in the tubes and the wires and the IV stuff. He jerks his arm a bit, and a line of webbing shoots out from his wrist and sticks to the wall across the room. Pull in on close-up of Amazed Kid, cue up that Danny Elfman theme, And we're out. And that's how I would have done it, had I been in charge, and if also I could have moved heaven and earth to make all of those still unlikely pieces come together. Uh, oh hey, we still have some time. So, sequel, of course, would be about Miles becoming the new Spider-Man, much more upbeat, introduce all of his supporting cast, title is Spider-Man, Brand New Day. And the villains are the Lizard, and a couple other minor bad guys all getting their powers from and working under Professor Warren, 
who is now also aka the Jackal, and at the end of this we find out that not only did he use the original Spider-Man blood to give powers to bad guys, he's made himself an evil Peter Parker clone. Because why the fuck else do you think I had the Jackal in this? And of course, said clone will be Tobey Maguire again, that's an image that'll send the crowds home and talking, right? Doing a full-blown, all the way up to 11 reprisal of his emo kid, evil Peter routine from Spider-Man 3. but now calling himself Ben Riley, wearing the Scarlet Spider costume, and acting as Miles' main nemesis in a there can be only one kind of scenario in sequel number two, part three, Ultimate Spider-Man. And uh, that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, Homecoming comes out in a few days. Let's see how that one turns out. Hey gang, here's a question that keeps coming up. If your handle is Movie Bob, where are your movie reviews? Well, my old reviews are in a lot of places. You'll find many of them on my YouTube channel, but you'll find the brand new ones on Geek.com, an awesome site that's also your one-stop news source for science, TV, gaming, technology, nerd culture, the works. You can find all my reviews directly by going to Geek.com slash author slash B Chipman, because that's my real name, and you can get regular updates on all my reviews and all of Geek.com's other great content by signing up for their kick-ass newsletter at subscribe.geek.com. And don't forget to also subscribe to the Geek.com YouTube channel, where you'll find the videos that accompany my reviews and tons of other great content, too. Remember, that's Geek.com, the Geek.com newsletter, and Geek.com on YouTube. Make sure you don't miss out on all the latest MovieBob reviews. You can also check out my own new website, MovieBob Central, where you'll find my blog, links to all my work, and shop for my books, ebooks, and future MovieBob products. And please remember to like these videos, share them with all of your friends, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching another MovieBob production.